So yeah, I guess if you if you tell us a bit about what the film's about, to start off with. Well, yeah, I, I mean, you know, essentially the film is about uh, this young boy, uh, Hiro Hamada, who's a 14-year-old genius, and uh, he goes through a very devastating loss, and uh, his uh, brother's robot, the, the invention of his brother, uh, basically comes back and helps heal him. And that's kind of the arc of the, the story. It's a story about friendship, it's a story about you know, how friends kind of transcend into family in a certain sense. I was interested by the fact that it's a sibling relationship that is the core of the film. Yeah. What was the thinking behind that? Well, we always knew that when we were building the film that the, the core of that film would be the brother relationship. And, you know, uh, and essentially Baymax takes on the surrogate brother. Uh, and so that was always kind of the driving force, always. Do you think that kind of relationship is seen quite often or regularly on, on film, or is that one that's underrepresented? No, you know, I think, I think that sibling relationships are something that has always been in literature and always been in film. Um, I think that, you know, the wonderful thing about this film is that you have the humor of those relationships and you also have the drama of those relationships. Um, I'm so proud about how heartfelt this film is and at the same time how entertaining it is and how fun. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been involved with, with this particular project? I've been involved now a little over a year. Uh, I brought it into uh, you know completion back in October, and it's been just joyous. You know, we we opened it in Japan, where obviously the film you know is set in this mythical world called San Francisco, and we were able to uh, take the Okio of that and actually premiere it in, uh, at the Tokyo Film Festival, and it was so terrific because. Uh, all the journalists there were so impressed with how authentic the world seemed, and here we are in this wonderful mythical landscape, and they're wonder they're they're in wonder of how you know beautiful it is. So it's, it was great. And what were some of the challenges of creating this, like you say, mythical, magical world of San Francisco? Well, San Francisco, it was it was interesting because uh, you know we needed to make sure that that town felt like it was alive. Two of our favorite cities, Tokyo and San Francisco. Uh, both incredibly vibrant cities. So what we needed to do is ensure that that, that feeling, that, that sense of life was kind of throbbing through the city. Um, and one of the things we did was set up a, a, a new system we call Denison, which is essentially a, a, a city populace machine. We're able to actually fill the city with all different types. Uh, it's interesting, walking down the streets of London the other day, I thought to myself, my gosh, this this could be San Francisco. Uh, sure, and now um, the film is based on a graphic novel uh, originally, I, yeah, I believe. Um, absolutely. What, how much of that has been transferred into the film? Well, the title, the character names, and then pretty much we were left to our own devices in terms of reconstituting the story. Um, it was great. Don Hall, who's the director, um, he really wanted to explore the Marvel uh, properties and see if there was something that we could you know, jump off of in terms of telling the story. And, you know, when he found Big Hero 6, he fell in love with the whole spirit of it. The great thing was we always knew it was going to be a Disney animated film, and Marvel was more than happy to allow us to just take that property, not set it in the Marvel Universe, but set it in the Disney Universe. So it is entirely separate from the Marvel Universe. There's no option of crossovers that yeah, as we've exactly. seen elsewhere. Which I think was a great choice. Um, you know, you never have to you know worry about seeing Spider-Man running through this, the streets, or you know, this is really its own universe. Uh, San Francisco is a world unto itself, and it's part of the Disney Universe now. Now, does that mean that's the end of the adventures, or are we going to see more adventures? Well, you know, uh, we just finished this film. We're getting it out into the world. We're going to take a big long vacation. And then we're going to come back and figure out if there is life after Big Hero 6. Uh, we'll see if, the, if, if there's a story to tell and the directors want to tell it, then it, it could happen. Did it help it being a property that wasn't as well known as some of the others in the Marvel back catalog? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it would be, it would be very difficult to pull you know, Spider-Man or pull you know, uh, Iron Man out of the Marvel Universe. It would have to stay. And, you know, Marvel does such an amazing job at, at, at what they do, uh, giving us uh, the freedom to create our own world was really a, a great gift. Um, was there any thought while you were making it of 
perhaps this would work as a live action film or was it always something that works as an animated film? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, I really believe uh, as an animation artist that what you need to do when you build an animated film is figure out the universe that it exists in and it needs to fit into animation, you know. Um, and I really think that there's something about this property and how we've approached it that makes it perfect for the animated world. I think it's a great combination of the sort of manga look that we've seen as well as the Disney look and yeah, yeah, that yeah, whole... Yeah. Was there a, a careful balance that you had to come up with to get that look right? Well, I think absolutely. You know, I mean, we're all big fans of manga. We're all big fans of anime, uh, huge fans of Miyazaki. And I think you can see that influence in the work. You know, I mean, definitely, uh, if you look at Totoro, there's, there's a certain kinship between Baymax and Totoro. Uh, but really, uh, uh, all things Japanese were, were influential in terms of making this great world. Excellent. Final question is in terms of the, the voice cast that you've got, an amazing yeah. voice cast. How okay. did you go about selecting them and, and what is it that they bring to the project? Well, you know, it's, it's funny because uh, we auditioned everyone. You know, we literally, and uh, probably Scott Adsit, who plays Baymax, it was the hardest role to fill because there, were, there was this line between warmth and robotics that only Scott was able to pull off. I mean, Scott was just phenomenal. Um, you know, T.J. Miller, Jamie Chung, uh, you know, they're, they're Genesis Rodriguez, they're all, they all came in and read for the roles. And the great thing about Disney Animation is that we're able to, you know, we've got a great casting department, and it's always the best actor for the role, and that's what we were able to do. Excellent, thank you, yeah. thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you 